Welcome to the book of Exodus. We've come to a pivotal chapter. It's chapter 12, and today the first four verses, the first we'll read, and then we'll think about it together. Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month they are each one to take a lamb for themselves, according to their father's households, a lamb for each household. Now if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his neighbor nearest to his house are to take one according to the number of persons in them. According to what each man should eat, you are to divide the lamb. So now comes legislation to all Israel through the two Levite brothers, Aaron and Moses. Up till now, we've pretty much been in narrative. We mentioned it yesterday morning, but now we're moving into a section of law. This is law. There's going to be a lot of legislation, so to speak, here, and it's going to come not from a, a, a government leadership, so to speak. It's coming from the priestly class here because the Levites are going to be the priestly group. And so this is interesting. For God's people, legislation comes through that group instead. It's also kind of interesting here how the very life, the very uh, the very plan for the, the, what God's people do is built up. It's all built here from uh, arising from God's deliverance of the Hebrew nation from Egypt. This is going to be the beginning of months. This is a fresh slate. This is a, a restart. This is a reset, a restart, and the nation is restarting. Uh, they're going to be taken out of from under the bondage of Pharaoh. They're under God's direct leading here now. And so, yes, it's it's just a, a giant uh, transition here to something brand new, something fresh, as they're going to return to the land that God had promised. And again, remember that none of these people had really been to Israel. I guess maybe Moses and Aaron part way, but, but everybody else has been living in Egypt and their ancestors living in Egypt uh, for a long time. So... Yeah, so a lot of these people are going to go to a place they've never been before. And that must have been fraught with a lot of interesting thoughts in their mind. Well, let's look some more at the text. But recognize Exodus is the starting point. Exodus is sort of the beginning of the nation here. Now notice uh, for us highly individualistic people in our age that a lamb is to be taken here and it's to be provided and sacrificed and eaten in terms of families, family units. Very interesting here. There's a communality here. There's a collective group. There's a group of people who are all in this together. And the, the unit, the fundamental unit, is more or less here the family. Nobody's left out. If the family is too small to consume an, an entire offering, then they're to combine with another family nearby and so that the right amount is available for each person. So sometimes they'll participate with multiple families together. It's a community meal. This is not just uh, somebody sitting at the table, you know, doing something else, which we sometimes do. We're in a big hurry. And so, yeah, you're doing three other things over here. And meanwhile, you're stuffing your face with some food. That's not what this is. This is a very, uh, very particular event. There's a connection between the different members of the community. They are going to be, they're being delivered together and they're going to live together in the exit or the exodus as they leave Egypt. And they're going to go through a lot of stuff out in the wilderness uh, together on their way to the promised land together. <laughs> so so this, uh, there's a community thing going on here. So God will pass over all the firstborn among the Hebrews in Egypt as they comply with the commands that he sets out. So Revelation 13, 8 in the New Testament tells us that Jesus is the lamb, it says, slain from the foundation of the world. And if you look at Revelation 13, 8, the same verse reminds us that there are two groups finally. What are those two groups? Those that are in the Lamb's Book of Life and those who are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life at that point. So there are two very distinct groups. Uh, one receives the benefits of the sacrifice, the other forsakes or does not receive the benefits of the sacrifice. In Revelation 13, there's a group who uh, submit to coercion, coercion, and they are uh, disobeying God and obeying the human leadership. They do not receive uh, God's seal, but they receive a mark. And that's, I guess, another topic of study. But it still pertains to this uh, 
Passover here at verse chapter 12. At chapter 12, there are so many interesting pieces we'll see the next day or two as we look at this. So one group rejects God's sacrifice and the other accepts his sacrifice. And here in Egypt, everything comes to that singular moment where, so to speak, everybody's either in Pharaoh's uh, camp or they're in God's camp. They're either uh, aligning with Pharaoh or they're aligning with God. They're either doing things Pharaoh's way or they're doing things God's way. And God has laid out some very specific directions here starting in the section we're in today. So if you're in Pharaoh's camp, you have no protection from the death angel. You, there's no marking uh, of your doorpost. And if you're in God's camp, you have the sacrifice, you're eating the sacrifice, the blood is on the doorpost, and you have protection from the death angel by following what God has said to do. So effectively, you're under the sacrifice in one group and you're not under the sacrifice of the other group. So the Passover is a very pivotal, very important piece because of course what it symbolizes, and it symbolizes Christ's sacrifice for us, his death on the cross in our place. The sacrifice of the Passover is going to symbolize God providing in place of the firstborn. So altogether here, there's kind of a microcosm of the war between good and evil, God and Satan. It's a microcosm of that kind of cosmic war, the ultimate war. One group will be sealed and protected and the other group will not be sealed and protected. One more little observation here before we finish. Uh, for today, and that is that at verse 3 and verse 47 of chapter 12, there's sort of a bracketing. It says, all the congregation, speak to all the congregation of Israel, da 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 and he goes on through these next 40, uh, 45 or so verses, and at verse 47, it sort of uses that phrase again, all the congregation. So everything is sort of encompassed between those two uh, bookends. So that's kind of an interesting piece here. All this instruction we're going to get it over a quite a number of days here as we look in. I don't think we're going to speed up here suddenly because we've come to the these uh, these legislative parts. Uh, we're, we're going to just probably carry on. At, we're going to carry on at about the same pace we have. Just because a lot of the story part is now going to be out of the way, uh, that doesn't mean we're going to speed up or something. We're going to just carry on step by step. Take a deep breath, everybody. There's a lot here. And there's a lot just ahead, a lot that's going to bless it. So when it says here, speak to all the congregation of Israel, remember, all the nation is together on this. And so we get this instruction for the Passover. We'll carry on tomorrow morning where we've left off.